Hey guys, Gravity here. What's going on? Welcome back to another episode of Marvel Contest of Champions. And today we're going to be continuing on with the How to Effectively Use series and taking a look at Juggernaut. Now, I know for a lot of people, Juggernaut is definitely a Alliance Wars defense kind of character. And that is absolutely one of the best places that you can use him. But I love using the guy in offensive purposes as well. I don't currently use him in my Alliance Wars defense because he is only rank 4. It's really hard to take uh, to rank up Mystic characters because there's so many good ones. Uh, I mean, you start off, you've got Doctor Strange, you've got Magic, and you've got um, Scarlet Witch. Mostly Scarlet Witch and Doctor Strange, but once you get into the five-star region, like I have with uh, the, the Awakened five-star Magic, that's really kind of the key thing because as far as pulling characters out of the crystals, like the, the regular crystals, Magic is the highest character for Prestige, and mine is Awakened, so... I would probably be taking Juggernaut up to uh, to rank five just for Alliance Wars defense purposes, if uh, if I wasn't working on trying to get Magic up there. But I like playing with Juggernaut as an offensive character as well, not so much for Alliance Quest or Alliance Wars, but you know just general questing in arenas, mostly because of his abilities. He's got Fury Five and Sid Rock's Favor Five. Let's take a look at the abilities. Unstoppable is absolutely amazing too. Juggernaut becomes unstoppable for 2.9 seconds, shrugging off enemy attacks. Once Juggernaut starts moving, nothing can stop him. What I like doing in offense is uh, building up to close to my L2, and then popping off an L1 and having an L1, you know, close to being, you know, brought up again, and just like beat the snot out of him until that 2.9 seconds wears off. And then hit another L1 and just kind of continue the cycle as much as you possibly can. It's completely awesome. It's completely OP. And especially whenever you're in unstoppable mode, the heavy attacks are absolutely awesome. 90% chance to stagger the enemy for 8 seconds. A staggered enemy cannot gain their next buff effect. It comes into play so so much whenever you're doing quests and things of that nature going up against characters that do draw a lot of buffs and uh, just being able to hit that heavy attack because you can hit the heavy attack as many times as you want to whenever you're using unstoppable so I absolutely love that when attacked 9% chance for fury increasing your attack by 45% for six seconds now we don't we we get that sometimes not a lot uh, it's a 9% chance. It's it's not the best in the world, but when we do get it, you get a 45% increase in your attack, which is pretty pretty decent. Passive, Sidorok's Favor, or, yeah, it's basically what it is. It's out here at Sidorok's Favor, but in here it just says Sidorok grabs Juggernaut, grants Juggernaut 20% increased armor. Additionally, at the beginning of the fight, he becomes unstoppable and shrugs off all attacks for 2.9 seconds. Now, I like that uh, at the very beginning of the fight, being able to do that. He gets that no matter what, even if he isn't awakened. And as you can see, mine is awakened up to 80. So I only need to find him one more time, and he will be completely maxed out. And then we'll know exactly how many uh, seconds that we get for the Unstoppable, which is obviously going to be at least three or more seconds, which is... I mean, it's just totally awesome. It is, it's absolutely awesome. Uh, unstoppable is probably... One of the, the key things that makes um, Rhino so hard now with his his uh, forward swipe motion his, is that whenever he can go into unstoppable when he does it, especially whenever he gets unblockable on it as well, but you get at least 2.9 seconds on a SIG level 80 juggernaut for that entire time, and that's, that's completely OP. I, I know I went over how to beat juggernaut in the last how to beat series and um, he was pretty easy to tease. he's honestly pretty easy to beat if you just play it out correctly his moves aren't exactly the hardest in the world to evade even his L2 isn't as long as you can keep his L1 and his L2 down then he's not really the hardest character in the world to fight but he is a ton of fun he's just a big massive luggy character and like I said I love using him on offensive purposes and since mine's not a rank 5 I can do that a lot I can actually use him as much as I want to because he's just it's fun not having to play defense so much with this guy because once he's in unstoppable mode, you can just rush in and just like completely destroy characters. That's that's one of the key things that I like to do. You know, you parry and you just beat the snot out of them and you just keep going, especially when you're in unstoppable. Unless they've got like a special built up, you just keep on going in, <laughs> you know? 
just keep on keep on hitting them and you know heavy attack after heavy attack until you can't uh, do heavy attacks anymore you know heavy attack and then just rush in synergy bonuses he's actually got some pretty decent synergy bonuses too with uh, colossus and Unst colossus or unstoppable colossus we got a seven percent crit rate seven percent crit rate with uh, hulk and a 5% attack with Doctor Strange. So he's actually got some pretty decent teams. Whenever I was running uh, him in the arenas with uh, with Hulk and Colossus before I took him up to rank 5, I was using this guy in that, that group with him, and it made a pretty good 14% uh, crit rate team on top of the buffs that he also brings along with those guys too. So uh, for me, honestly, the best place for this guy is definitely Alliance Wars Defense. And it really doesn't matter exactly where you put him at within the uh, the board. He he can be a total beast anywhere on it. Uh, he's, he's really hard to deal with, especially if you can get him on like enhanced ability nodes where he's going to get a uh, longer duration on his unstoppable with uh, with that node. He could be a complete and total beast, but he just it se he seems like he just does more whenever he's in alliance wars on on defensive purposes, but. Again, I enjoy playing the crap out of this guy on offensive purposes, and that's that's kind of the key thing that I get to use him for since he's not a rank 5. Um, I don't bring rank 4s into Alliance Wars defense. Not anymore. Not with the number of rank 5s that I have. But Alright guys, so that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like on it. If you're new to the channel, please consider leaving a sub on it. And as always guys, I'll catch you in the next episode. Later.